Hello there, my fellow punching bags of the inner sphere, and welcome to some Battletech lore. Bringing another addition to our Battle Armor series, today we're gonna take a look at a couple of designs out of, you guessed it, the Capellan Confederation. For today, these designs are the Fashi and the Trinity. I do hope I'm pronouncing that first one correctly. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first of today's designs is the Fa Shi, massing at 1 ton and costing around 400,000 sea bills. The Fa Shi, or Master of Methods, as it's supposedly translated, was actually the result of the Capellan Confederation biting off more than it could chew. With the introduction of battle armor by the clans, and as the other inner sphere powers began fielding their own variants, the Confederation decided to produce free variants of their own at the same time. Research and development began in April 3056, but since they didn't have any practical experience with battle armor, they realized they could not properly engage in such an endeavor, and then reduced their workload to only one variant, an adaptation of the inner sphere standard. Even so, it took several years, and finally the help of the Word of Blake, before the Capellans could properly implement the environmental containment and life support systems for the suit, and begin final testing in 3060. The prototypes became available starting in June 3061, with full-scale production beginning in 3062. The Fashi duplicates many of the features of the Inner Sphere standard battle armor including the jump capacity and most of the weaponry. However, the suit went against battle armor philosophy of the time by emphasizing defensive capability as much as offensive. The most notable expression of this philosophy is the use of mines. The Capellans have long since used mines in combat, and so the Fashi comes not only equipped with the ability to lay mines, but also mine clearing apparatus in its arms. In keeping with the Xin Sheng campaign instituted by Chancellor San Tzu Liao, the armor of the Fashi was also modeled along Chinese aesthetic lines. It quickly built a reputation for excellence among the Capellans. Although the Confederation eventually succeeded in its original design goal, and the Trinity series of armor was added, although the Fashi would continue serving on the battlefields for many years afterwards. During the Jihad, the Capellan Confederation received a boon as the appearance of clan forces on their borders allowed for first-hand acquisition of clan technology. Using clan components, Ceres Metals refitted several Fa Shi suits in 3078 to better match the Ying Long Trinity suit's capability and improve their anti-battle mech potential. While these were successful, any further development of these improved Fa Shi suits at the time was stopped until the Confederation could either secure a steady supply of clan technology, or reverse engineer it themselves. Equipment-wise, the Fashi carries a modular weapon mount in the right arm. This can house a flamer, a machine gun, a small laser, a light recoilless rifle, or a light tag to spot for Arrow 4 artillery, or semi-guided LRMs. An anti-personnel weapon mount in the left arm allows it to carry lighter weapons suitable for taking out infantry. Just like the Inner Sphere standard, it is equipped with jump jets, able to make jumps of up to 90 meters at a time, and can engage in anti-battle mech attacks. Although they were not able to incorporate their new stealth armor technology into the design, the Capellans were still able to mount 350 kilos, or 770 pounds, of standard armor. This provided above-average protection for a suit of its size. It also granted it the ability to absorb a hit out of a clan ER medium laser while keeping the pilot alive. In its rather unique role as a mine layer though, its most important feature is the mine dispenser. This is carried at the back of the suit, equipped with two canisters each, which when deployed in mid-jump, can cover several hundred square meters of terrain with mines. In addition to laying mines, the Fashi can also safely remove them, with the addition of the mine clearance equipment to its basic manipulators. Yet another beneficial attribute of the Fashi is that it is equipped with magnetic clamps in the knees and underarms. 
These allow the Farshi to ride into battle on standard vehicles and battle mechs in a similar manner to how other battle armors can hitch a ride on an Omni mech. The feature was considered a necessity due to the fact that the Confederation had only a single Omni mech design of their own at the time, the Men Shen. The support Farshi was a variant introduced in 3074. This removes the mine equipment to make enough space for a manned portable plasma rifle or a light Gauss rifle. The Farshi II was an experimental variant which was a custom refit by Ceres Metals in 3078. Under the supervision of Ogden Isray, four Farshi suits were fitted with Clan Technology Mimer boosters. This not only increased their ground speed to 32 km an hour, but also improved their strength as well, allowing to tear from mech armor with their manipulators. This came at a cost though, as 150 kilos of armor had to be removed. Only four of these were built due to the limited number of Mimer boosters that the Capellans were able to acquire. The second of today's designs is the Trinity, massing at one ton and a cost of 319,000 sea bills. Trinity battle armor is in fact not just one design, but three built on a common frame. The actual development history of this thing is rather bizarre, as the suit appeared with amazing speed at a very convenient time. Capellan second line commanders and the allies of the Capellans would speak up after the preferential treatment of the elite and politically connected military units as they were the ones who received the Fashi armor when it debuted. That the commanders were willing to put their jobs and even their lives on the line by officially noting their displeasure spoke volumes about the need for more battle armor. With Canopian and Torian promises to fund the R&D for the new battle armor, the CCA have spared no expense, and the Trinity moved from initial development to standard production in less than two years. During the prototype stage, the Capellans worked with designers out of both realms to outfit designs that would fit the operational and cosmetic needs of their nations. The Capellan version, the Ying Long or Shadow Dragon, is a bit shorter and harkens back to the Chinese Dragon. The Torian Asterion resembles the Torian Minotaur Totem. The Canopians in their turn made a political statement by naming their somewhat taller armor the Theseus, the legendary slayer of the Minotaur. Once all the designs were done, the Capellans agreed to produce them until the two realms could produce their own models. After a few years filled with communication errors and misplaced parts, Taurus Territorial Industries and Fox Infantry Systems were finally able to reverse engineer the design, ending the two realm purchases, much to the surprise of the Capellans who were stuck with dozens of the foreign designs. The Trinity is tougher and sleeker than its predecessor, the Fa Shi, able to take a full large laser impact and survive, while it is capable of sustaining a 30 km per hour ground speed. They feature battle claws to swarm enemy machines and also a modular weapon mount on the back. The Capellans usually use a plasma rifle, while the first periphery nations mounted a medium recoilless rifle. Since manufacturing moved to the periphery as well, the Torians began tinkering with a variant wielding a support PPC, while the Canopians have been known to trade down to a lighter recoilless rifle and add in a trio of rockets. Another difference between these three is that the Ying Long mounts the cutting edge mimetic armor used on the purifier. Because of that, the word of Blake stopped just short of official accusations of espionage. The Free World League and the Federated Sons wondered if there was any collaboration between the Liaos and the Blakists. Meanwhile, the Torians and the Canopians rose above the snubbing and produced their cheaper armor at a greater rate. While their armor performed well in minor conflicts and raids, it finally got a good test on the battlefield during Operation Sovereign Justice. The Trinity did manage to outperform the Fa Shi, using better armor and longer combat range to overcome the lack of jump jets. Even the Davian Cavalier battle armor wasn't ready for the range of the Trinity, and the Trinity's suits were able to defeat the Davian forces before it could reach combat ranges on one occasion. If the Capellans and Canopian forces found a problem with the battle armor, it was its inability to mount on non-Omnimax. Equipment-wise, the Trinity features a modular weapon mount in the torso. 
The Capellan version usually occupies this with a 20-shot man-portable plasma rifle, while the periphery versions, the Theseus and Asterion, typically use a 40-shot medium recoilless rifle, although other configurations are possible too. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Capellan designs, the Fasci and the Trinity, for today. Fun fact, there's a lot of overlapping in both designs and production for Capellan, Canopian and Torian designs. I also wanted to make a video for Periphery Battle Armor, and in that video you might see what I'm talking about in more detail. Nevertheless, what are your thoughts on the Fasci or the Trinity? Did you know about them or use them in your games before? Do share any thoughts or questions in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have a healthy awesome day.